Congratulations on choosing the DSE router. This video will make getting you up and running a lot easier. Watch this video through a couple of times before you do the setup and make sure you've got this quick start guide to hand while you're doing the setup. If setting it up yourself is still making you nervous, don't panic. Dick Smiths have also included a voucher like this from Downer who can get a representative near you to pop over and get you sorted out in no time flat. The DSE router is an excellent bit of gear that will totally transform the way you surf the net. Here's what it can do. The router uses ADSL technology which will let you access the net and talk on the phone at the same time. No more missed calls, no more frustrating engage signals when people are trying to get hold of you. With the router you're online as soon as you turn on your PC. No more mucking about dialing up your ISP. You just click your web browser or your email program and you're online almost instantly. Because the router uses ADSL, you can go online at blazing speeds that will leave an ordinary dial-up connection in your dust. Downloads and large emails will take a fraction of the time they used to. With the router's four network ports, up to four PCs can be networked to share files, printers, scanners, and even an internet connection seamlessly, making the router ideal for situations with several PCs. Before you go online, you'll need to contact your internet provider and get them to switch you over to an ADSL internet access plan, otherwise the router won't work. Most ISPs usually have several different plans, so check with your ISP to see which one's best for you. Many ISPs like iHug have an online application form for switching to ADSL. Check with your internet service provider to see just how to go about getting switched over to ADSL. If you don't already have an internet provider, Dick Smiths have bundled this iHug voucher with the router that will get you up and running for as little as $27.95 per month. Check your packaging for the coupon, it's a fantastic deal. More information on using ADSL is also available from the Dick Smith Electronics ADSL website at this web address. So now you've got your ADSL connection sorted with your internet provider, let's get you up and running. First things first, let's make sure you've got everything you need to get started. The first and most important part of the router are these, the quick start guide and the driver CD-ROM. The quick start guide will show you how to set things up and the driver CD-ROM has this video on it. Now it's a good idea to put both these somewhere safe once you're finished with them in case you need them later on. The next bit is this network cable which can be used to connect the router to your PC. You'll also need to have a network cable for each PC you want to hook up to the router. These additional cables can be bought at any Dicksmith Electronics store or online via Dicksmith's website. If you decide to connect the router up using a USB or universal serial bus connection, you'll need this USB cable which is also included. The plug on the end of the cable should look like this. A phone cable and this adapter is also supplied to connect the router to a phone socket and get you online to the internet. Last, but by no means least, is a router. Here's a list of all the bits supplied with the router. The installation CD, a downer installation brochure, phone adapter and phone lead, an ethernet cable, the USB cable, an AC adapter, an iHug voucher, the user manual, the quick start guide and the router. So now, let's get to work and get connected. Hooking the router to your PC using a network connection will provide you with a much faster connection than going with the USB option, and it's a piece of cake to do. First things first, you'll need to get the router powered up. To do this, plug the power adapter into a nearby main socket and then connect the power adapter lead to this plug on the back of the router. Next, you'll need to hook up the phone cable to your phone socket. If you're planning to use a phone on the same socket, you'll need to buy an ADSL filter like this. Otherwise your phone won't work properly or your ADSL connection may become unreliable. If you've got an existing ADSL connection, chances are that you may already have a splitter installed and won't need to install a filter. Check with your internet provider or installer before purchasing a filter. 
If you're using a filter, the phone cable's other end plugs into the socket marked ADSL on the filter. Phones, faxes and answering machines then plug into the filter's phone socket, and the filter plugs into the phone socket on the wall. Connect the ADSL cable from the filter to this socket at the back of the router. Now you've got everything ready to go, connect a supplied network cable to one of the spare network ports on the back of the router. It doesn't matter which one. Connect the other end of the network cable to the network socket on your PC, which should look like this. You'll also need to repeat these steps for each PC network to the router. The next step is to set your PC up so that it recognises the network connection. Click your PC start button and then click control panel. Find the network icon and double click it. Right click the local area connection icon, then click properties. You should see something on the screen that looks like this. On the network property screen you should see a window listing all the network protocols installed on your PC. Click the TCPIP protocol for your PC's network card, not to be confused with TCPIP for a dial-up adapter. And then click the Properties button underneath the window, listing all the protocols, like this. Next you'll see a button asking if you want to get your IP address automatically. Click it and make sure it's checked. Make sure the Obtain DNS Server Address Automatically option is also checked. Once you've finished configuring up your PC's network settings, You'll need to click OK and then restart your PC for the settings to take effect. See, I told you it wasn't too difficult to do. You can also configure your PC's network settings manually. Refer to the router's manual which will show you how to do this. Hooking a router to your PC using a USB connection may not be as fast as using the Ethernet cable supplied. It's a great option though if your PC doesn't have a network adapter built in and does have a spare USB port. First things first, you'll need to get the router powered up. To do this, plug the power adapter into a nearby main socket and then connect the power adapter lead to this plug on the back of the router. Next, you'll need to hook up the phone cable to your phone socket. If you're planning to use a phone on the same socket, you'll need to buy an ADSL filter like this. Otherwise your phone won't work properly, or your ADSL connection may become unreliable. The phone cable connects to this plug on the back of the router. If you've got an existing ADSL connection and are using a filter, the other end of the router's phone cable plugs into the ADSL socket on the filter. Other phone devices like faxes, answering machines, phones, plug into the filter's phone socket. If you've got more than one phone device, you can plug double or triple adapters into the filter's phone socket. Now that the router's powered up and hooked to your ADSL phone line, connect the USB cable supplied with the router, which should look like this, into the back of the router and then into your PC. Once the USB cable is connected to your PC, turn it on and once it's finished starting, your PC will detect the router and ask you to install device drivers so that it knows how to talk to the router. To do this, insert the CD-ROM driver disk into your PC's CD-ROM drive. On the Welcome to Found New Hardware Wizard window, click the Install Software Automatically button and make sure it's checked. Click Next and your PC should start to install the drivers for the router. During the install, some versions of Windows may report that the drivers are not digitally signed, Click Continue anyway to proceed. Once the completed Found New Hardware Wizard window appears, click Finish, and you're done. Now you've connected the router to your PC via a USB connection, you'll also need to connect up any other PCs to the router using the four Ethernet ports on the back of the router. To find out how to do this, check the video on installing with an Ethernet connection. The next step is to set your PC up so that it recognises the network connection. Click your PC Start button and then click Control Panel. Find the network icon and double click it. Right click the local area connection icon, then click Properties. You should see something on the screen that looks like this. On the Network Properties screen you should see a window listing all the network protocols installed on your PC. Click the TCPIP protocol for your PC's network card, not to be confused with TCPIP for a dial-up adapter. 
and then click the Properties button underneath the window listing all the protocols like this. Next you'll see if you want to up here dramatically, click and check. Make sure you retain the server automation is also checked. When you finish configuring up your PC network settings, you'll need to click OK and then restart your PC for the settings to take effect. See, I told you it wasn't too difficult to do. You can also configure your PC's network settings manually. Refer to the router's manual which will show you how to do this. Now we're almost done, but you're not finished yet. Next we've got to tell the router how to log into the ADSL internet account that you've set up with your ISP. You'll need the user ID and password supplied by your ISP to do this. First of all, you need to log into the dedicated internet server on board the router. To do this, start Internet Explorer and type in the following address, http colon slash slash 192.168.1.2. Once you've done this, you'll see a pop-up window that'll log you in to give you access to the router's configuration menus. By default, the user ID to gain access is admin, and the password is password. These are case sensitive and must be typed in exactly like this. When you've entered them, click OK with your mouse. The next thing you'll see is the router's home page. All of the router's settings can be accessed from the left panel. More help's available at the top here. While most of the settings are pre-configured for you, you'll need to tell the router the ADSL user ID and password supplied by your ISP so it can connect you up. To do this, look on the left hand side of the screen under the configurations options and you'll see a link to WAN configuration. Click this. Now you should have the WAN configuration screen in front of you and you'll see under PPP settings a space for your user ID and password. Type them in here. Remember that user IDs and passwords are case sensitive and must be typed in exactly as your ISP advised. Once you've done this, click the submit button at the bottom of the WAN configuration screen. On the home stretch now, you'll also need to change the router's default login and passwords to prevent unauthorized access to the router's settings by hackers who could have figured out the factory default passwords your router's been set to. It's a good idea when creating a new user ID and password to use a combination of letters and numbers. This makes passwords harder to guess and things much more secure. Once you've decided on the password and user ID you want to use, write them down in the space provided in the back of the quick start guide in case you need to log into the router to change any settings in the future. Doing this will only take a few seconds but can make a big difference. The first step is to click the password configuration on the left hand side menu under administration. Next type in your new password. Then repeat the password here to confirm the password you've entered is correct. You'll need to do this for both the admin and user logins. Now you've configured the router, all that's left to do is to save the settings by clicking the Save Configuration Setting link at the bottom left hand side of the screen. And you're done! Now you've got everything up and running, it's a good idea to make sure that your network is secure. Because an ADSL connection is constantly online when your PC is switched on, it's a tempting target for hackers and other internet nasties. Installing the Zone Alarm firewall included on the CD-ROM will ensure that any unauthorised access attempts to your PC are blocked. Installing Zone Alarm is easier than falling off a log. Simply insert the router CD-ROM into your PC's CD-ROM drive, and once the installation screen comes up, click the Install Zone Alarm button. Your PC will install Zone Alarm automatically, securing your PC from any unwanted internet attacks. To be totally sure your internet connection is secure, there are websites that can check your PC security. www.grc.com is a great website that does just this. To use it, just click here, scroll down to Shields Up, 
click it, and scroll down to test my shields. Click it and wait a moment while it tests. And here are the results. Congratulations, you're connected and secure. Have fun online.